Hey, what's up everyone? Today I'm going to make a dessert in my crock pot. I'm going to make an apple crumble. So last night I was parked in the city. I was just in here playing some video games at uh, Resident Evil 4. But I could hear some uh, noises and the van started to shake. And uh, I looked up front it turned out someone was trying to pull the door open to get in here. So I guess my stealth mode was working. He had no idea that I was sitting in here. Uh, and once he realized he couldn't get in, he ran over to the next vehicle and the door was unlocked. So we went right inside and started rifling through all their stuff. I called up the RCMP, but they never bothered to come. I guess it was low priority on their list. But yeah, it's been over, over a year that I've been living in the van and that's the first time something like that's happened. I'm, I'm glad he didn't try to smash the window. I've got uh, I've got bear spray, but that could be a disaster for both of us if I sprayed that inside here. Anyway, let's uh, let's make up this apple crumble. So I got a peel core and slice these apples first. I'm gonna keep working on this. It might take a while. There's people right outside my van. It's like, come on! I'm trying to do a <laughs> trying to do a cooking show here. But yeah, I'm just going to uh, toss the apples with some brown sugar, lemon, cinnamon now. Um, I don't really have to measure it out. Uh, I like a little bit of sweetness, not too much. Cinnamon. Whoa! This thing cores. That's pretty good. Nice and evenly coated now. Time for the next step. All right, I'm gonna do the crumble part of it now. So I need a half cup rolled oats, quarter cup flour. I got some sliced almonds. Let's do them all. That should do it. Some cinnamon. And butter to melt it all together. Of course, if you got a microwave, then you can melt your butter in there and then just pour it over top. But uh, I just melted it in the pot here. Uh, seemed like the easiest way for me to do it. This is ready to go. It's looking good. And now, the final step is to put the crumble on top. It says to cook it for about six hours on low. But I'm just going to do uh, four hours since I'm doing a half recipe. I think that should be enough. I'm going to put a uh, towel over it just to help collect the moisture. Today I'm going to try to summit Mount Granger. It's kind of far away, so I'm going to need my uh, fat bike to get closer to it. I'm going to try to bike across Fish Lake, uh, but it's warm out. So what happens is the, the trails turn to mush. So I don't know what's going to happen today, but I guess it's better than doing nothing. Well, it's already too mushy and I mean I got to ride 10 kilometers out in that direction then climb a mountain by late this afternoon it could be completely unrideable. So <laughs> I think I'm just going to do a loop out on the lake then head back to the van. Well, that's the way she goes. I'm probably going to have to wait until the snow melts off until I can get my fat bike out again. But right now with the travel restrictions and the lockdown, I'm just completely crippled for what I can do for outdoorsy type content. So this, uh, this might quickly become a full-time cooking channel. Maybe it's time to go get an Instant Pot and give that a whirl. But uh, maybe what I can do today is uh, a review on my Huawei P30 Pro phone. I've been using that uh, extensively over the past few months to vlog my travels. Uh, so while this uh, Apple Crisp is cooking, uh, let's take a look at the phone. So I wanted to have a phone with the most versatile camera possible and the P30 Pro seemed like the best choice at the time. Uh, it's got three different cameras, the ultra wide, wide and five times telephoto. And I think this is really one of the first uh, phones to have all this technology 
packed into it so you have to keep that in mind uh, when it comes to image quality uh, they put the best image sensor in the main lens and then they uh, kind of cheaped out on the other two the ultra wide it uh, it really suffers in low light uh, I needed to have that lens in here it's the only way to capture all this in one frame but uh, the lighting in here just wasn't enough for it and it just came out really grainy so we're probably gonna have to wait three or four more years until we get uh, equal image sensors all the way across the board so I do a lot of hiking and biking if you didn't know and uh, being able to fit all this camera right into my pocket is just amazing for me I really don't want to have to carry a DSLR or a mirrorless and two or three different lenses um, another way to go would be to have a GoPro which is what you're looking through right now and a uh, compact point and shoot they usually have a good uh, 30 times zoom on them and really good uh, image quality so that'd be another way to go but uh, I really like having everything in one device and even though I have the GoPro now I still tend to use the uh, ultra wide on this when I'm out and about and uh, the image quality on this is uh, really really good and for what I'm doing uh, just YouTube vlogs it's more than enough so I think only the main lens has optical image stabilization built in uh, there is EIS across all three and it's not going to work wonders if you're on a bicycle or something like that your footage isn't going to be very usable it's nowhere in the same league as what a GoPro can do for stabilization but uh, if I'm just hiking and I have this on a selfie stick it's it's just enough to remove the vibrations and uh, the footage actually looks pretty good with that but uh, one of my grievances with the uh, EIS is that you can't turn it off it's on no matter what and it uh, crops in on the video quite a bit the only way to get around it is to use a third-party camera app like uh, Filmic Pro one of the problems that I found with this camera is that uh, in certain lighting situations the video goes really flickery I noticed it quite a bit when I was trying to do time lapses and clouds are moving around in front of the Sun so the amount of times that uh, that glitch ruined my video is just frustrating and the included time-lapse app from uh, and the included time lapse app from Huawei is just awful. It maxes out at 720p. Like, really? Who's going to use that? The only way I can describe the camera app on this phone is clumsy. It was better back when I had Android 9, but since I updated it to 10, they just made it worse, and I wish I could go back. They've added this ability to use a two or three times zoom or a partial ultra wide. My clumsy fingers, they always get stuck in between the zoom levels. And the only zoom levels you want to use are the main ones. Anything else is just a digital zoom. And if I want to do that, I do it in post. The best camera app that I've ever used was on an LG V20. The manual mode on that was just absolutely perfect. The manual mode on the P30 Pro though, it's a joke and I've never used it. Uh, there's a problem with the, the manual focus. If you pull the, the slider all the way out to the landscape, it doesn't go quite far enough and the image is blurry. I've read about this problem online and lots of other people have experienced. It seems to be a deeper problem and uh, it also happens in uh, third party camera apps and it's just a, a glaring glitch. I think that's about all I had to say about the camera system. Uh, it is good but it also has its problems. Uh, this is the, the VOG L29 model. It's got uh, 256 gigabytes of internal storage. I record all my videos in 4K and I've never been able to fill this up but I'm sure if you went out for a week or a month you might be able to. You might have to switch it down to 1080p. It does have uh, expandable storage but it's some kind of proprietary Huawei memory card. I've never even seen them in the stores. It's just another cash grab. It's just silliness. Another reason why I went with this phone is that uh, it uses a 45 watt fast charger and this thing is amazingly good. On my uh, last bicycle tour I've just spent an hours and hours in at the library waiting for my phone to recharge so this makes a huge difference. Even now if I'm just headed out for a hike and I notice my phone isn't topped up if I plug it in for 10-15 minutes that normally does the trick. It's got an in-screen fingerprint sensor. It works all right. If the screen is wet at all then it starts to struggle to get a reading but uh, the GPS is also really good. It's fast and accurate. It's never let me down. And I've also used this uh, down to minus 30 Celsius. It just kept working. I've had iPhones in the past that will shut down in a slightly cool breeze. So this is amazing in comparison. But uh, can I recommend it? Yes or no? It's hard to say. I guess if uh, you're on the market for a new phone and uh, you want a good camera system and you can find a good price on a used one, it might be worth it. But uh, I think my apple crisp is just about done. I think by the time I make some dinner, it should be ready to go.
Nice. Bacon would went really well on this. It's time for the main event. I wish I had some ice cream to go with it, but uh, that season has passed. They're gonna have to wait until next year until I can have ice cream again. That's looking good. Well, that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching and thanks to Patreon supporters for help making this happen. Hopefully the next video will be more exciting and uh, this lockdown will come to an end and we can all get back to our lives as normal. But anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. This is the best part of the game right here. Welcome. <laughs> I really hated Resident Evil 1 and 2. Didn't bother to play 3. The controls and the gameplay and the voice acting, they're just such terrible games. But uh, you always knew there was something to the series and I think Resident Evil 4 was where it all came together.